Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. This live webinar. As you know, we are here on the second and the fourth Wednesday of every month, bringing you some of our industry topics. And uh, this presentation is even better. So today, we were looking at um, really different products. Where are we at in our industry? At Braxton College, we deal with people from EMS, uh, with fire, and of course, from the educational component. So tonight we have three fantastic guests and we have several things to cover. So we're here with Jamie Green from Henry Schein EMS, Ramon Valdez, Jones and Bartlett Publishing, and Chief Billy Banks from FireTech. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the EMS products that are out there, what's new, what the impact of COVID had, and then what's coming, and the same thing with fire and our education. So thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for joining us tonight. Looking forward to it. So we're going to start with, with the obvious. You know, we've been dealing with COVID-19 now for 15 months. Our industry has been greatly impacted. As first responders and providers, um, we were learning this as we went. And in the first few months, there was some difficulty. And uh, we've learned. And now we've really changed the way we do business. Um, and you're our suppliers. You're the vendors. You're the ones that are providing a lot of these products with us. So we'll stop. Or we'll start right here with uh, Chief Banks. Give me a little bit of an idea of, you know, where you were. You know, how did COVID nineteen affect your industry, and and what did you change to adapt to it? So basically, we pretty much got shut down with selling equipment. Everything went to COVID products. And we didn't really have too many products out there to uh, combat COVID. So we had to go looking. And the first product we came up with was BioEsk. It was a uh, uh, disinfectant that was on the uh, CBC list that killed the virus. And right. then we had to find a way to uh, administer that spray. And we basically went out and got the uh, Victory line, the Victory backpack and the Victory handheld sprayers. And... We did very well with that, but we were always looking for a better solution because spraying is only as good as the person that's doing the spraying. Sure. And you know, after running 13 calls, two o'clock in the morning, yeah, you're not going to be really spraying that rescue truck that good anymore. So we get it. I'm a firefighter. I know how it goes. Right. So the next thing we came up with was a product called the Sanity System. It was an ozone generator that you basically put into the truck. Um, 22 minute cycle, you couldn't be in the truck. It takes the O2, converts it to O3 ozone and cleans the truck while the truck's running. So our plan was to rent these machines out to fire departments to keep the cost down. When they got to the hospital to do patient uh, transfer over to the hospital, they could start the machine. At the end of the cycle, they could come out and their truck would be clean. No spraying, no fuss, no muss. So that was a pretty good thing. Other than the chiefs didn't like the fact that the trucks had to be out of service for 22 minutes. I'm sure, I'm you sure. Know? So the latest and greatest thing that we have found, and we just found this about a month and a half ago, it's technology that was developed by NASA. It's an active pure machine. It is approximately uh, 12 by 10 by nine. It can run 24 seven. It dispatches positive and negative ions in the air that travel at 1200 feet per second. And if there's a virus in there lurking, it attacks the virus and kills the virus. Wow. So these things have been a hit, not only for the trucks, but also for the stations. That's amazing. So we're going to circle back to those, and we're definitely going to show some of those products for, for those that are watching. But I know FireTech, you were huge in, in selling fire gear and decontaminating fire gear um, that was in an IDLH environment. And I know you're still doing that, but I think from a fire perspective, most people switched their funding. You know, we, we only had so much money and it was going to all of these products. So uh, that's great that you guys were able to adapt and serve a need uh, for them and, and, and really launch a whole nother part of your organization, you know, to serve that, which is fantastic. And we're going to loop back and go into those products. So we definitely want to hear more about it. Uh, uh, Jamie uh, with Henry Shine EMS. So, you know, you guys were supplying the EMS supplies. So your phone was ringing off the hook. I know that. You know, so, yes, well, you know, what, what did you go through and how are you guys handling this now? Well, I think, well, well, for us, you know, we were impacted as a company like everybody else. We were having to send people working from home, having to adjust work schedules yeah. in our distribution centers, you know, and trying to find product. You know, the shelves were cleared off in, in less than a month, you know, and our buyers were, were frantically working to find more product to fill those shelves to keep our customers taken care of. 
uh, and, and we just had our national sales meeting last week and our president of the medical division made a, made an interesting point. A true point is that, that, you know, there were those of us who rose to the top. And when I say those of us, I'm talking about different divisions. You know, our dialysis division, the EMS division and the athletic and schools, you know, they were heavily impacted probably more so than, than some of the other parts of our company. You know, we had to step up. Well, we had to take care of our providers out in the field. You know, the issues with our school, their dialysis, people don't stop dialyzing when in the midst of a pandemic. You know, and so we had all of those stressors going on. Uh, to take care, but we came out of it. We came out of it well, you know. It, you know, it was were we a little beat up? Sure, we all were a little bit sure. beat up. Um, but I have, you know, we we talk about our, our concept to Henry Shine is that it's team shine, and I think that term gets tossed around. But we really were a team. You know, our buyers were working constantly. Our accounts payable were working with folks. We know money's tight. Our finances, you know, are a challenge right now. What do we got to do to keep you going? Because we don't want to shut you down. That's the last thing we want to do. Um, you know, again, with our distribution centers, you know, we we went from uh, from maybe one or two shifts, maybe working around the clock, working the weekends because we could only have so many people in the building at any given time. Uh, our shippers, you know, uh, you work with us to get stuff out. Just just you know, our, our our folks just doing extraordinary things to take care of the the practitioners in the field, the folks in the office to make sure that patient care continued. You know, no matter what was going on, you had, as you know, better probably than most, you had to have that material in the field every day, not once, but all the time. And we didn't right. know when this was gonna end. That was the thing, we never knew what, we, we, you know, I remember being, oh, well, this will last 30 days. Well, here we are, what, like you <laughs> yeah. said, seven days later. That's a long We're still going. Days. We're yeah. still wearing masks, right? Yep. Yep, but and, you know we finally fell into a, we finally fell into a rhythm, if you will, in, in June of last year. Um, was it stressful? Was it you know the, a lot of demand, high demand? Sure, but now we knew how to come at it, and we were we were finally you know our buyers were finally landing you know deals that were exclusive to us, so that we could have a quantity of gloves, a quantity of masks, a quantity of gowns, whatever you all were needing in the field. We, our buyers had, had gotten that for us to now sell and get to you. Yeah, I don't think, you know, we, we look at a small snapshot of whatever industry you work, whether you're in an EMS organization, a fire-based EMS, a hospital, mm -hmm. wherever you're at. And, and we think in the perspective of what we go through in gloves in a day or surgical masks or KN95s or N95s in a day. I could only imagine the numbers that were in demand from your organization in a day. I know I called you a lot, <laughs> but, and, you know, a lot of people were looking at, you know, you're talking of hundreds of thousands, millions of gloves a day people were looking for. Um, and they were grabbing them wherever that they could. Um, and yeah. I know Henry Shine's a very large company, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah. one of the yep. biggest um, yep. that's out there. And if you couldn't do it, you know, we we're picking them up wherever we could. So um, now we got a pretty good handle on it. Right. Yeah, yeah, we do. And it's coming back. It's coming back. Um, some parts have come back stronger and quicker than others. But in general, it is coming back. And again, we, we've now got to figure it out. Like I said, it took us a couple of months like everybody else to figure it out. But once we did, once we got our stride, we were we were going, we were moving right. and we still are. That's that's awesome. That's great. So now we move on. Well, Ramon, I can tell you from a school perspective, we were stuck. Right. Most schools, um, traditional brick and mortar schools like Braxton College was hey, uh, you guys can't open right now. Right. And we were at the, the will of whatever the counties, the cities or the state in which you ran in. Um, and these were the providers that we needed to graduate and get them out in the street. So right. we were stuck at a school level until we can quickly switch gears and do a lot virtually, which some schools were very well prepared for and some did not. So, Ramon, you know, how did this impact you guys with, you know, COVID? Where, where, where did you switch, you know, change course? Well, it was, uh, it was interesting because I, I, I do think, like you said, uh, nobody was really prepared for how long this was going to take. Um, so we, uh, we had to initially, you know, create these short videos. If you're having to go to remote learning, here's some guidance. Here's some, uh, here's some uh, advice to make sure that, uh, the student is kind of creating a, a place to learn and not a place for distraction as much as possible. 
um, from their side. But I think um, one of the things that definitely helped was uh, we also had uh, some of our products have interactive lectures inside the courses. And we made those available for free for a lot of our instructors for, uh, for a period of time, just as an extra tool that they could have to actually, if they have to do remote learning, here is a time sync objective. And these lectures could be anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. Um, I know with some programs, they, they would open those up, whatever chapters they would have normally covered in person in the classroom, they open them up at 8 a.m. and the students would have until 6 p.m. to actually complete these lectures. So that was um, that was kind of one of the initial uh, responses, but I, I really think it's uh, it's led to how we approach everything. How can we take this standard course and either flip it so that it can be delivered remotely, or right. give the instructor some guidance for if you need to do this remotely, here's what you can do for this lesson, or this lesson requires EKG equipment, so it needs to be done in person. So we, um, we ran some workshops uh, throughout the year that were very successful, uh, specifically for things like uh, how do you teach a class remotely? How do you use Zoom links inside Navigate? How do you have active chat if you don't have the bandwidth to do a video conference uh, with your students? And um, for the flipped classrooms that we have for EMT and paramedic, those actually lent themselves pretty well to being taught remotely because everything is kind of bite-sized anyway. Right. Right. All that content that they're uh, being delivered, they have to watch a video and then they have to answer some questions around that. Or they have to work together as a team and build something. They can do that at home uh, if it's a working model of lungs using balloons and a soda sure. bottle. And they can just present that virtually. So we, um, we've we actually taken a lot of those activities uh, that are coming uh, that were built for the flipped classroom in mind and have included some of those as part of our standard courses going forward. So uh, our EMT 12th edition has activities that are cribbed from the EMT flipped. And uh, same thing with the EMR, we've got active learning uh, opportunities for those. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that's interesting because now everybody's kind of seeing things in a different light to say, if we need to suddenly be stuck at home, right? how do we present this content to the instructors? Um, and I know just speaking with instructors day to day, that is uh, definitely an active concern. Every time we have a conversation, if I need to teach this remotely, how do I do this? Or what tools do I have available to me uh, to do this? So I, I think it's uh, it's definitely going to have some longstanding impact going forward for how we approach everything, for sure. And, and that's, you know, normally when we think of traditional EMS training and, of course, fire training, we think hands-on, right? That's how most people learn. So we need to be in person. But I think over this time, we've learned to, we can do a lot online um, but it starts with the institution and the faculty, like you said, where, where people are reaching out to you say, how do I do this online? And it's not as easy as like we're doing right now. It's not just me talking to you. Now, the good thing is with, with a lot of the technology, you can see your students' faces, um, which I think is key in a classroom for any instructor to see if you're kind of reaching them. Uh, but we see too many times, you know, students are, clicking that off a little bit. Hey, I'm listening, but I'm just, you know, my video's not working or this. And that's, that changes the dynamics of things and, and skills and things like that become difficult when we need to go virtual, but that's the way we're going. And your organization is, is kind of leading that, especially for our industry from an EMS um, training perspective, because that is your main focus is public safety, correct? You know, uh, with EMS and EMT paramedic, uh, and again, we'll go back to some of your new things that are that are coming up. So let's go back and, and let's talk to your organizations. And again, I appreciate what you've done for our industry, all three of you, um, in the past 15 months, because I know that that it was a change. Um, you know, we needed something and we needed things quickly, whether that be fire, disinfectant, medical supplies, or education. We couldn't put our industries on hold. You know, we needed to keep going and your organizations adapted that. That's why I think it was really important for you to be here. And and again, we appreciate that. And I thank you for what you've done. Um, so let's go back to FireTech. Let's talk uh, um, to Chief Manx. And you mentioned some of your great products. So let's go back to you um, and start and see where you're at. So, you know, we can include the COVID products as well. You know, what do you have? Where are you going? You know. Where, where's FireTech taking us? 
we we're focused on uh, gear cleaning. We were the uh, first ISP in the state of Florida, uh, UL verified, and also to get verified under the new cleaning standards of how clean is clean. So the NFPA and everybody's been doing numerous studies on how clean is clean. Nobody really knew when we do the gear washing, the advanced washing, nobody knew how clean it was. So now they uh, developed a process to determine how clean is clean. So basically we get a sample sent to us that has some type of chemical or some type of product on it. And we introduce that into a surrogate coat that we wash and clean our normal way. That sample then gets sent back to the lab and gets analyzed and actually analyzed to see how clean is clean. And um, we actually did a good job. You can see up now is the research foundation report. And it's a three page report. And I recommend that all firefighters take, you know, 10 minutes to go through this report. It tells you how the re how the, to analyze and how the um, found the uh, foundation figured out to make those steps to see how clean is clean and see if your ISP is actually certified and pass this disinfectant and sanitation process that we need to do now. And, and Chief, I, I, you touched on some great points there. I think firefighters in general, and um, we want to go clean cap, right? We know the the hazards of putting this gear back on and the cancer initiatives and what we're being exposed to. So organizations like yours, taking that and professionally cleaning it, not cleaning it as the firefighter at two o'clock in the morning going, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and put it back in the truck. So we're making some great moves on one side and forgetting your side. You know, they're, they're really, you know, what is clean before I put this back on? And this is a pretty good start, you know, um, where at least clean your gear. We may not be able to go to clean cabs and do everything yet due to the cost, but your gear is really, really important. Well, there, there's going to be no such thing as a clean cab in my eyes. It'll be a cleaner cab. Right. Unless your firefighter is getting fully deconned on scene and using our decon kit where you can actually get into a second station uniform on scene and clean yourself, you're getting back into that cab yeah. with contaminants on you because that gear doesn't really protect you like it should. We all know that the uh, 2015 study, the uh, FAST study that they did, how the smoke comes into the gear via the cuffs, via where the coat and the pants meet, and you get it on your clothes. Unless you're changing your clothes and wiping down on the scene, you're, you're getting back into the cab and you're contaminating that cab. So there's something called a cleaner cab, but I don't think there's anything that will be a clean cab. And, and that's you know, that's because uh, in South Florida, we really have taken that initiative, and I'm sure it's everywhere, and I hope it's everywhere, from even the wiping down. You know, we take our gear off, and we use your company. We take our gear off, bag it on the scene, decontaminate as much we can before we even get out of it, uh, clean, wipe down the cloths, and then you get that gear, stay in the bag, and we switch into a, a different set of gear. But like you said, our clothing isn't changed until we get back to the station and take a shower and change our clothing. So that's a great point I think people miss is we're sort of clean. We're better than we were. You know, but we're not there a hundred percent yet, and and organizations can take some small steps to help that. Yeah, we got to take baby steps to get yeah. there. To get there, and yeah. it's got to start early in the fire academies, with the fire academies teaching these guys about their gear, about I'm not just wearing Morning Pride, I'm not just wearing Globe, but know exactly what material they're wearing, what the uh, what the um, THL and the thermals are on them and know exactly what they're wearing and how the gear works. That's one thing in the fire service I really didn't know about until I retired and started working at fire tech. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. You, you had know, this on your whole career, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I mean, I knew what the outer shell was, but sure. and I knew it was a three piece ensemble, but I didn't really do the studying that we do now to, uh, to yeah. see, you know, what's actually your, what you're actually wearing and how much protection you're actually getting. And it varies throughout different states. You know, in Florida, we're hot down here and humid, so we got to have gear that breathes a little. Right. You're in New York, it's a different story. You're in Boston, it's a different story. So, you know, your environment and your area and your surroundings dictate some of that stuff on your gear. Yeah, and, and Jamie Green, I know you travel all over the country and you deal with a lot of fire and EMS departments. Do you see this happening throughout the country? I mean, I can look from us from a Florida perspective. 
You know, is this really going on like it should be? Are people really embracing this technology? Um, in, in varying degrees, Bill, I think the chief hit on a key point is people sort of smirk when you say clean cab concept. And really, it's a cleaner cab concept. Yeah. Uh, we, those, are, those, those of us who've been in the field know you're never going to get into a cab after an incident 100% clean. Right. It's just not It's not going to happen, okay? Right. So that has caused some folks just throw their hands in the air like they do over many things in our industry at times. Like, I ain't doing that. I said, well, hold on, hold on. Take a deep breath. Right. You're not going to do it all at once, but yeah. do a little bit at a time. If no more, do gross decon on the scene with your turnout gear. You know, those kind yeah. of things. So. Florida is leading this, I think, because of the impact it's had on our industry, you know, and and um, just in general, you know, we do those kind of things. I think that's one of the unique things. I tell people a bad day in Florida is a good day anyplace else, quite frankly, in our business. And I mean, <laughs> you know, um, but so people are coming to it, but and, and, but they're coming at it in a realistic approach is what I'm getting at, because it, it was be- it, it was initially presented all or nothing. Well, it's it, that's not right. going to work. That's right. Work. Yeah, you need to buy a new fire truck, right? Yeah, we're only doing that. You know, that's your start. That that doesn't need to be your starting point. Um, yeah, I, so I have a cousin who's, who's you a just put one of your in New York, and and I'd say, well, when you buy your clean cab truck, he goes, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, see that. I, I look Gee, at it. They just had your sprayer up there. You yeah, know, I look at it. I look at it this way: we're 100 percent dirty now. When we haven't been doing anything, we yeah. take one step, we go down to 90. We take another step, we go down to 80. We take another step, yeah. we go down to 40 or 50. And if we yeah. keep taking those steps, we're going to reduce our risk, you know, tenfold yeah. from what we're at now. And like and you said, we're trying to do. You start in the fire academies; those are our leaders of tomorrow. That's what they're going to know. That's normal to yeah. them. So they're going to expect that as they move in. So your sprayer was just up there um, on the screen. Tell me a little bit about how some of these agencies can be helped with those. Okay. Those so the, especially uh, that don't have them. Yeah. So the sprayer that was up there, there was two of them up there. There was a backpack sprayer and there was a handheld sprayer. Uh, no, Freddie had the wrong one there. So the backpack <laughs> sprayer, it uh, you can put a little bit more in than the handheld sprayer, but it's probably three times or four times the cost. And this is for spraying the disinfectant, the bioesque. Right. That um, they're both electrostatic uh, products, so they're not going to damage anything. And um, basically, you you load it up and you you spray it. And like I said, it's only as good as the person doing the spraying. So the person that's doing the spraying needs to take their time and actually spray up and underneath the stretcher. Get all over the cab of the truck. You just don't stick the wand in there and hold the button for five minutes and expect it to go everywhere. Right. And I think that's where some of the agencies are making some mistakes there. And your contact information is on the bottom there and on the flyer that's on the screen. Do you have them available? Yeah, we have them available. Okay. So everything that you'll see there, we have available in our office right now. And that when Jamie was talking earlier, that was the thing that we got the phone calls. People would call up and they say, do you have this in stock? Yeah. Are you waiting on it? Because they couldn't wait on it. I mean, there were some POs that we were filling at the, some point in time that you had to have it filled in five days and there, you know, so be, there was other people that were selling stuff that didn't have it in stock. So we got a lot of right. those phone calls. Do you have it in your, in your office? Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then the other one that you have, right. What's the other product that you have? That- um, we have a product called the sanity system. That's an ozone generator. Um, Freddie yeah. will put it up. It's about the size of a uh, briefcase. This is a product that takes the uh, O2 in the air, changes to O3 ozone and then the air in the uh, cab of the truck, why it's running, you can leave the, that's the, uh, that's the act of pure Freddy. That's the next one we'll talk about. So you can leave the truck run. The problem is it's a 22 minute cycle for a rescue truck. Okay. And you can't be in the vehicle for those 22 minutes. And it takes all the oxygen away, right? Yeah, so. There's no spraying, no moss. It goes through the AC system, cleans the AC system, and you're good to go. And um, those machines we rent. We're trying to keep the cost down to our firefighters. Those machines sell for about thirty-five hundred to forty-five hundred, okay. and we rent them out for roughly uh, three ninety-nine a month. And okay, you can use them as many times as you want. Oh, that's that's great. Okay, yeah, yeah. and then the last product that Fred has up on the screen now was the Active Pure. That's the one that uses the NASA technology to dispense positive and negative ions at twelve hundred foot per second to attack the virus and drop it to the ground. That can run twenty-four-seven. Um, okay. hardly any maintenance, basically a maintenance light pops on, you take the filter off the back and you vacuum the filter and plug it back in. 
And these are relatively inexpensive. These run anywhere between $999 and $1,300. Okay. And how big of an area do they clean? They'll cover 3,000 square feet. Oh, okay. That's not bad at so all. We've had a lot of actually charter bus companies contact us that are putting them on the charter buses like Greyhound and right, some of these. Right. And they just run them the whole time. And it cleans more than just COVID. I see the yeah. start of COVID too, but you know, it's a... It, It'll, it'll clean VOC, smoke, mold, mildew, dog dander, just about anything. I had allergies and I bought one of these because we always like to test the product before we right. sell the product. And I have a little bit of allergies. So I put one in the house here and um, I haven't had any problems in the last month and a half that I've had it run. It runs 24-7, 365 right now. That's great. That's awesome. So your contact information is below. Um, yes. So your website, and obviously it's on all the flyers here. Um, that, that's fantastic. So let's move on here. Let's talk to um, to Ramon. You've been quiet um, because obviously now we talk about education. Um, you know where are you at now? You know where where is Jones and Bartlett going? And, and let's talk some of your new products that are out there. No, thank you. Um, yeah, we uh, we know that uh, we definitely have. Uh, uh, in Florida, community health care medicine is something that is uh, is an increasingly uh, important topic. So um, just to kind of highlight, to make everybody aware, we do have a community health paramedic textbook uh, that we have uh, uh, developed uh, just a, about a year or so ago. Uh, and if you search for that on our website, you can download a, a sample chapter uh, if that's uh, something that you uh, are interested in, in, uh, in teaching towards. Um, but to kind of go back to those... Uh, those conversations we had about uh, what's going to shape us going forward. Um, one of the titles that we're really uh, looking forward to uh, that will tie into uh, this, uh, uh, into those conversations is our community risk uh, reduction textbook. Uh, that's coming out in a few months uh, or in a couple months uh, here. And um, we had uh, for that title uh, that's written by a CRR expert with 24 years of fire service experience. Uh, so this is going to be one of the first CRR uh, titles, um, textbooks that's out there and that's, uh, that's available. So definitely something to look forward to. That's something that we can always uh, get you in touch with. And uh, anybody who needs the instructor resources for that, um, absolutely uh, reach out uh, to us and we can make sure that you have access to those. Um, I think like you, you mentioned with that community paramedic, that's all over the country, right? Everyone wants to do it. Um, and there's the textbook there. So everybody wants to do it. And I think with COVID-19, it had a huge uh, need where everyone didn't need to go to the ER. You know, people right. needed some basic care as well. And this would have been a big thing. And our state in Florida, and I, and I know you're not local, in Florida, we're looking to make this a certification. Um, everyone wants to do it. You know, we could go off and all the billing, you know, how are you going to pay for it? But we all can come to a consensus that this is a big deal. This is something that most agencies, if they don't have it already, are looking to go to. And our state is is being uh, proactive with this and trying to create the certification for it. And, and Jamie sits on our EMS Advisory Council for the state, and it does go through that. So um, if you don't mind, Jamie, just kind of chiming in of where we are with community paramedic, where these Jones of Barlett materials are going to help that. Sure. Thanks, Bill. Um, in the EMS Advisory Council meeting that was held the last week of uh, April, uh, Steve McCoy, who is now who was the state EMS administrator, now he's the bureau chief of the Office of Emergency Preparedness within which EMS resides, told us that as a result of the Florida Department of Health seeing how EMTs and paramedics were such large participants and contributors in this pandemic and testing and inoculations and, and all the other things that went on, that for the Florida Department of Health, community paramedic is a priority for the Florida Department of Health. Now, one of the things I know from my experience, when they start saying something is a priority, they're going to start putting dollars Put money in it. Right. <laughs> right. You know, yes. They'll start doing the legislative legwork where like bill says and it will be voluntary but nonetheless so we're going to have we already got education programs and they're going to grow now because of that but also they're going and getting certified so that now we have a, a a measurement of your knowledge that is nationally recognized 
So and so here in Florida, we're 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 going. We're so going. for schools that you know, if I wanted to start a community paramedic training program, you know, where do I start? Well, I know where we start. We call Jones and Bartlett, and we say, okay, where do we start? I need a textbook. I need some instructor materials. You know, we create our own you know, lesson plans and what we want to teach, but we have to start with that. I mean, the materials yeah. are there, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay. Right. So, right. Ramon, what else? You said you talked about community risk reduction, right? And the community paramedic, what else is going on for Dunn's and Barlett? Well, uh, to just kind of go back to uh, how we're shaping things kind of going forward um, and, and how we're approaching things. Uh, we, we did come out with some titles that address uh, COVID-19 uh, specifically, oh, just right. to just to mention them, uh, we do have a COVID-19 guidance for EMS providers. Um, it, it's just a very straightforward ebook. It's not meant to be a comprehensive oh, okay. uh, subject, uh, subject expert uh, type of text. Um, it's just meant to be another tool. So you have an EMS professional who's out there trying to get more information or just trying to have something that is gonna give them, you know, common sense guidance in some aspects, but also a history of how this has been treated or um, what uh, What should we do? What are steps uh, for prevention uh, for this? So the COVID-19 guidance uh, was something that came out as a response last year. Um, we also have case studies for COVID-19 uh, global lessons learned that can go along with this or can also be put into these other EMS uh, courses. Um, and, and they're just interactive case studies handled very much in the same manner as an ebook where the student uh, or the person going through this would click on the case study and watch a presentation uh, and then explore how the response should be uh, delivered for that or uh, what are some complications or scenarios. Um, and it's just, again, just straightforward. It's not meant to be an end all be all uh, tool right. for this, just extra uh, study or extra and this knowledge. is going to be taught. This is going to be taught in every EMT and paramedic program for years to come, right? So there was a huge value for students. Um, if there's a positive, there was a huge value for students over the last two years to learn during this process because we were all learning, right? Hopefully we're better when and if this happens again. Well, but those people are the leaders of tomorrow. So to have things like that, that we can continue to utilize and share those um, lessons learned type of thing, I think will be really valuable. Uh, yeah. That sounds like a great product. Yeah, and uh, our EMT 12th edition just came out, our EMR 7th edition just came out. Those are also falling in line with anything that we had for uh, pandemic uh, knowledge, any standards that were introduced last year are rolled into those new editions uh, going forward for this year forward. Um, and, and again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, anything that we have uh, out of the flip that we can actually take and take those little bite-sized bits of knowledge uh, out of the flip classroom and introduce them into more of a standard hybrid type of classroom uh, right. or delivery of that content, that's what we definitely want to do. Uh, I, so I think you have too, the 12th edition. I see the 11th edition on the screen. 12th edition is coming out now. 12th edition has released. Uh, the okay. 12th edition of the flipped is coming out here in a couple weeks. Uh, and the EMR 7th uh, has also just released. Um, to uh, to your point, Bill, I, I think the, the great thing about having this, if people aren't familiar with Navigate um, and the way that it's set up is normally if an instructor uses a textbook, we give you resources, we give you PowerPoints, we give you a test bank. With our course, it also kind of gives you the opportunity to just kind of standardize everything. So like you said, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Jones and Bartlett has it. So you have, right. here's chapter one, here are all the PowerPoints. Here's the learning objectives. Here's the ebook, so the student doesn't have to carry the book around and carry extra contaminants around. They can right. actually put that on their phone or on their tablet. Uh, and if the instructor wants to give tests to the students or quizzes or print those off, they have that. They have uh, access to that. So um, definitely anything that we can do to just kind of help standardize or just give you kind of that running start to say, here are all the materials. Here are the, um, the access codes for the students and they have access to this live environment that you can uh, you can organize. That That's great, and and you mentioned flipped. For those people that are watching that are like, what in the hell is he talking about, right? So um, some are very big on flipped education. Um, so explain to me flipped education. No, I, I'd love to. I have um, uh, flipped uh, methodology is kind of near and dear uh, to my heart. Um, I'm kind of a nerd about it, so. Um, if, uh, 
if you uh, if you have a standard classroom, normally you have um, if you think of it as a theater, the instructors at the front of the classroom lecturing to the students for hours on end. The instructor wants the students to read, and sometimes those those students are reading inside the classroom when really you're kind of wasting time. That yeah. active reading that the student is doing, maybe they can do that before they come to class. And that way, when you're in class, instead of having that theater presentation of the instructor on stage delivering to the students, you're bringing them in for skills. You're making them part of the presentation. You're making them part of that learning experience. And it's taking the the lectures and they still, they still have their importance, right. but we're maybe doing that for certain subjects only. And for this other subject, we're going to do some type of team uh, building uh, activity or some type of uh, um, actual building activity. Like, let's have them build a working model of a birth emergency, working okay. together as a team or using uh, materials that they have at home, like a doll from a sibling. Um, let's have them build a working lung model and let's have them pre present a rap uh, medical terminology song to the classroom. The point right. is, let's let's get them out of the comfort zone. Either yep. it's funny, or it's going to make them uncomfortable. But it's going to make it sticky. It's going to make it memorable. So right. that's uh, that's uh, that's the whole approach to flipped, and that's why I love that we're taking components and activities out of those flipped classrooms and putting them into these more standard um, EMT or standard uh, paramedic or EMR uh, classrooms. So so that yeah, you it, it's an incredible. It's a great concept. It's new. Um, some people have fully embraced it. When you talk about skills, lab is separate. So these aren't lab skills. This is group activities, things to prove you comprehend the material. And teaching today's student, if I come and I lecture and expect them to pre-read, but I'm going to read them the material, they're not going to pre-read. They come to class and go, why would I? You're about to read it to me. Right. I don't need to review the slides. You're about to read them to me. So I need to stop that. And I think the challenge of flipped lies right here with the instructor to embrace that and realize that you can do it differently because people learn differently. If right. they can apply it, they understand it. You know, if I can have somebody draw me this, then they know it. Um, so I don't need to sit there and just talk all the time. So it is a different than traditional education, but EMS and fire have been different forever, right? We're, we're always different. So it's a, it's a great uh, way. And I commend you. I know you guys are really on the kind of the leading edge and that's not a new one for you. You've had some flip books already and some flip resources, which have been great. And I know several schools in our state use it, um, which is fantastic. So I commend you on that. Excellent. Well, Jamie, uh, last but not least, let's yes, talk sir. about where Henry Shine EMS is. Um, you know, where are you at now? Where are you going? You know, what, how can you help our viewers here? Well, um, you know, we were, if you can imagine with the pandemic, we were in attention and the tension is you got to meet the immediate needs. Yep. You know, you got to get the PPE, you got to get the supplies out, but you don't want to sit still. You know, if you can imagine in the midst of, of trying to get the supplies in and get them out, We've we've also got people saying, "What's coming down the road? What's right. what's, the tech, what's the next thing that's coming at us?" You know, so it you know, and it's so it's fascinating. Um, you know, like I say, it's a tension uh, that that okay, here's where we are, but here's what we're gonna here's where we're gonna go. What's going on? Right. So I brought three things tonight. We've done we believe it or not, we've done quite a bit even in the midst of the pandemic. Um, but we're all familiar with ultrasound, and ultrasound has now been with EMS for a few years now. Yeah. Um, we've seen a couple evolutions of it. Um, GE has come out with the, the newest ultrasound, the V the V scan air, which is tetherless. It is wireless. What you see in that picture there, that is the ultrasound device. Awesome. You load down an app to your iPhone or Android or your ePCR, and by Wi-Fi, you can transmit what you are looking at with the device to the technology. So, uh, so as a user, I yes. think ultrasound in EMS is, um, it's not where we need to be. It's where we are, um, yes. where yeah. we, we're expecting, you know, certain images. It's a game changer. It, it's a hundred percent game changer. And it's not 
for what we're using it for, it's not as difficult as people think it is. You know, I'm not exactly. trying to be an ultrasound tech. I'm looking for certain things uh, to help us in EMS. So these are great. And you know what? They're they're pretty affordable. You know, it's not you're not priced out of the market here. Right. Yeah. There's no ongoing contract with this device. You know, you buy it up front. You're using your technology to view it and to transmit it. And there you are. You're, you're done. As great. Far as the functionality. Um, the next thing that has been brought to us, we're all familiar with the drill IO. We've yep. been using it in their industry for years now. Yep. Well, BD, Becton Dickinson, has come out with a, I'm going to call it the second generation drill IO because for a couple of things, number one, it's rechargeable. Oh, okay. It's a rechargeable drill that has 12 times the life of any other similar device currently on the market. Okay. And they package the needle, the IV extension set, and the stabilizer in a kit. So it's all in one place. You're not pulling pieces, parts together. Nice. Color coded. Yeah. Color coding is the same. So you have to learn a whole new scheme of colors. Okay. But it's all packaged. Uh, it's all right there, so to speak, uh, for you to use. But like I say, um, you know, it's rechargeable, 12 times the life of anything that's currently on the market in that regard. Um, and it's it's been met with a lot of great folks have been really. I took it into a school, Bill, of all things. I took it in. They said, "Can we try it?" They went into their into their skills lab, and they come back and go, "Holy man! You know, I'd, I'd have to push as hard, and it went in a whole lot faster." Okay. And, and where's the FDA approved sites? Where where can you use it? Where any of the same sites? Humeral yeah. Head, Iliac, yeah. Tibial. Yes. Yep. Yeah. No okay, difference so, in that regard whatsoever. So you can see there's three three little dots on the side there. It's sort of tough to see, but those are lights to tell you. So when every one of those oh, okay. is, is yeah, hard, so every time a light drops down, you're you've lost 25% of your uh, your power, and it takes three hours, three or four hours to get recharge it. And so, if you can hold it right there, is that um, a protect a safety needle cap? Yes, as, as the needle is removed from the the uh, insertion it's a safety cap that comes down over the end of the or needle. an iv cap that would click into place for safety yep this it's it's a little bit better design where the other one could tend to hang up you know when it first started this they, okay. they've, they've taken care of that here yes very nice excellent okay so for those that are viewing uh that aren't familiar <laughs> with with ems and intraosseous that's basically a bone infusion so instead of your traditional iv um, EMS providers can put that directly in the bone um, and provide fluids, meds, things like that through um, the marrow of the bone, which can get to the vascular space and still get to our organs. So when we can't get an IV, we go through a bone and there's certain locations that we're really able to do that in the leg, in the arm, um, especially with people who are in dire straits that, that we really need an IV and if med. So that has revolutionized EMS. Uh, for us to be able to get access in some people that we couldn't otherwise get that. So it's great yeah. product. Okay. Yeah. What else do you have? The, the last thing I have for you is cryothermic. Um, and, 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 you know, we have been, again, in our industry, you know, cooling in, a, in the resuscitative effort, cooling the patient so we could have a better outcome or potential outcome. So this is one of the uses of this. Um, I had I had a medical director look at it and said, well, I can do it with a with a cold pack, and that's why I chose this slide. It's colder than a cold pack, you know, so it's going to okay. be you know, a little bit more effective. But I also, when I look at this, I think about uh, the NFPA fifteen eighty four firefighter rehab. This could yeah. be used in a rehab setting. This could be used in your heat exhaustion or your heat stroke patient. So it's got several parameters that it can address in patient care. Uh, we just uh, recently took this product on, and and I think it's going to address a need. Again, we've already been cooling patients. I understand that by IV. This is just yep. another way to do it. Are you marketing in that way, or what's your your marketing with this? Is basically just body cooling, not fire based. Anybody, um, but you know, I don't think we use that. And Chief Banks might be able to comment on that. I don't know anyone that's doing cooling to that extent in a firefighter rehab. And we don't want to cool them too much. But, you know, here in South Florida, it, it'd be nice to, you know, put some type of cold pack on us, which we don't routinely do. No, we don't. 
So the only thing I've seen is the uh, chairs that have the yeah. arm so the, the arms that you have. can submerge your your arms into. Yeah, I've seen right. I've seen some nice products out there, expensive products like the uh, rehab trailer for firefighters, but nobody's stepped up and uh, gone that far yet. Right. Yeah. So so yeah, we're 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 not just um, we're not just presenting it just for the resuscitative effort going on. We're looking at all the parameters where this product could be used because sure. it, it, it's colder, so it's going to cool better and quicker. That's all. How long does it last? Um, I think it was on the package. I think it's like twenty minutes. Okay. Maybe right. longer. Good question. It's longer I than a cold pack, you know, that ours that we pop and shake up. Oh, and right, the right. time it's and on them, we got to change it up. You know? Yeah, and that's what happens if people said, oh, well, I already, I already have cold packs. This is more than a cold pack. Right, right. And I think that's what deterred from using cold packs in the past is because they did have a short life in those scenarios. Sure. This one's going to last colder and longer. That's that whatever, whatever situation you want to put it in, it's going to be colder and longer. That's fantastic. So, um, well, I appreciate everything that you guys have to offer, and I hope people that are viewing can have these same face-to-face -face conversations to see how you can help their industry. No matter if you're just you're an instructor teaching EMT, and you're in your classroom and go, man, my my school doesn't have all of these, or or I'm not sure. You know, uh, you know, we go to JB. If you're a firefighter and say, well, how can I convince my department to purchase this or start cleaning gear? You know, maybe there's data that they can do that and bring that up the chain so we can get it to where it needs to be and adopt that. And obviously for medical care, uh, medical equipment, the ultrasounds and things, I highly endorse them. I, I think they're fantastic. But all three of these organizations are going to be at our at the upcoming conference here in South Florida for First There, First Care. So if you've never seen that, firsttherefirstcare.com, um, very large conference prepared with the gathering of eagles. It's going to be the week of June 14th. The expo starts on June 15th. It's at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in South Florida, um, which is should be fantastic. Um, it's open. You can come if you go to firsttherefirstcare.com. There's there's hotel discounts, um, but these vendors will be there. Um, so I, I really wanted to present them so you can see what they have and and you can target that. So their information is run across here uh, throughout this talk. You can always reach out to us at Braxton College. I can put you in touch with them um, if you didn't reach that. But I really appreciate all three of you. You had some great information, great products. Um, I'm going to kind of turn the, the last statement over to each one of you to um, for the parting words. But again, on behalf of Braxton College, uh, we always you know, appreciate you giving time for us as a college institution. Um, and and showing everybody what's new, what's coming. I think you're you're changing the industry. You know, all of your all three of our industries, and and we have to start with these newer people. They're going to be the next ones from an EMS perspective, fire education, which is fantastic. So I'm going to start with Chief Banks. Um, again, thank you for coming, and uh, floor is yours. Well, like you were pushing first, there first care. We're going to be there. We're going to have all our products there. We'll do demos with all three of the products for you to be able to see and see what your organization can use for disinfecting. If your organization wants to get on the bandwagon and start following 1851, we can have a conversation about that and get you set up and get your gear cleaned. Um, that's what we're here for. Thank you so much, Chief, for, for coming. Uh, Ramon, how does Jones and Barlett Publishing? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, having us, uh, having myself here. Um, yeah, just uh, really appreciate everybody's time tonight. Um, if you have any questions, if there are any resources that anyone needs, uh, definitely let us know. Uh, we have uh, we have new techs coming out all the time, water rescue, the uh, community risk reduction. Uh, we also have guidance for how to teach your course. And I think that's uh, kind of uh, probably the most important thing. If you're not sure where to begin, let us know. We can work with you. We have a, an instructor support team that their job is literally just to support instructors, either training them how to use our system or give you guidance for what, how to teach something remotely. Uh, so to that end, we're, we're always working on solutions. We're always working on uh, uh, items to help out our instructors. Um, we have a lesson guide that we have developed uh, for the flipped classrooms. Um, I mentioned that quite a bit, but we have developed a lesson guide that tells the instructor very specifically 
you can do this remotely. If you need yeah. to do this portion, this activity, or this lesson, you can do this remotely. We're going to flag these as, a, as ones that do require that mannequin, that very specific child mannequin to, to have to do in person. And that is an approach that we're taking to everything else, um, whether it is uh, taking those bite-sized approaches to the content, making sure that we're still teaching this in a way that is as good as, if not better than the standard. Um, we want to do that uh, for sure. Uh, and yeah, we're, uh, we're here, to, here to help. So I can't hammer that uh, home enough. Um, just let us know if you have uh, need of any resources or you have any questions. Uh, and and I thank you because we've utilized your resources and I've contacted you on a number of occasions um, because you know, we need it. You know, we have to have those resources to be able to teach the content. So thank you very much, Ramon, for joining us tonight. And last but not least, again, we're going to go back to Mr. Green from Henry Schein EMS. Thank you, Bill. And my thanks to you and Braxton College for the opportunity. And on behalf of all of us at Henry Schein, we appreciate opportunities such as this to get out and, and talk about uh, who we are and more importantly, what we can do for you each and every day. Uh, all the products I discussed tonight will be in our booth at First There, First Care. We will actually have the manufacturer reps there. I always call them the subject matter experts. I'm the generalist. They're the specialists. Um, we'll have some other products in there, but those are the big three that we want to feature uh, here in the next few weeks. When we're all together at the Hard Rock. So again, my thanks to you and Braxton uh, College, and, and thanks to the viewers, for the folks out there who took the time this evening to watch and listen and learn. And any questions you have, feel free to email, and I'll do my best to answer. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, again, thank you so much um, for spending an hour with us. And for those that were watching, um, we appreciate your time. We're going to see you back here in just a couple of weeks. So make sure you watch us on social media, see what the next topic is going to be. You can always come and find us YouTube channel. You could watch this presentation, especially if you've missed some of their contact information. Uh, this will be stored on our YouTube channel at Braxton College, or you can find it on our Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn as well. So again, thank you. Everybody have a good night. Stay safe. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. And we'll see everybody at First There, First Care in, just in the next month. Thank have a good you, night. Thank you. Thank, thank you, gentlemen.